Grade A under A released a video called Questions I've Always Wanted to Ask Vegans Part 1, and I'm more than happy to answer them. If you've ever met a vegan, you know that we absolutely love talking about veganism, so let's get right into it. All vegans want to do is end the suffering of animals, right? Yet somehow, they're almost universally hated. It's not necessarily about ending animal suffering. Our goal is to end animal exploitation. This distinction is going to be important later in the video. And yes, we are very hated. One study found that the only group of people hated more than vegans is drug addicts. I think I found some mistakes that vegans have been doing. And also, right, there's a few things about veganism that I don't understand. So to better understand the vegan cult a little better, right, I have a few questions, mate. Vegans definitely make a lot of mistakes, but I don't love how he refers to us as a cult. Veganism is based on the scientific evidence that animals suffer and feel pain, and the fact that we don't need to eat any animal products to survive and thrive. If you want to see cult behavior, try talking to a meat eater about animal rights. You'll be bombarded with appeals to nature, tradition, and religion. When I went vegan, I feel like I escaped the cult of meat eating that was thrust onto me by society. I don't 100% fully understand what you can and can't do as a vegan. Now listen, I get the whole thing about eating fruits and vegetables is fine, but eating meat is unethical, right? Because animals have to die to give us meat, obviously. But why can't you have eggs and milk? Not me. Cows and chickens don't die to make eggs and milk, right? Yes, they do. Male chicks are considered useless to the egg industry because they can't lay eggs, so they're ground up alive right after they hatch. Egg-laying hens are typically killed around 72 weeks because that's when their egg production declines. All dairy cows are slaughtered. In fact, 18 to 24 percent of the beef sold in the U.S. comes from spent dairy cows. Cause eggs and milk come from factory farms, which are cruel grade, and by eating them, you're contributing to like, yeah, yeah, I get that right. But what if you had cows and chickens yourself, right? And you were nice to them. Now, let's say you're an animal lover, right? And you got lots of land, right? And you decide to buy some chickens and cows. And you love them and you cherish them like you're fucking Mary Poppins or something, right? And in doing so, oh, look at that, mate. I'll pop a few eggs, right? And I'll squirt some milk into a conveniently placed bottle. So why can't you have those? We can start with milk. Cows only produce milk after they've had a baby. So you'd have to keep her pregnant and nursing all the time. By repeatedly impregnating her, you'll end up with way more cows than your backyard can support, and her milk production is gonna decline after about five years. Cows naturally live to 20 or 25, so she won't be producing milk for the majority of her life anyway. Now let's examine backyard hens. The first thing to note is that most backyard hens come from hatcheries where the males are ground up alive. When you buy a hen from a breeder, you're directly supporting the cruelty at the hatcheries. But let's say you rescue a hen who doesn't come from a hatchery, what's the problem with that? Selective breeding. Hens today are bred to lay over 300 eggs per year. In the wild, they would lay 10 to 15 per year. This overproduction of eggs leads to health issues. Every time they lay an egg, they lose vital nutrients like calcium, so the best thing you can do is actually feed the egg back to the hen so you can replace those lost nutrients. Some sanctuaries actually give their hens birth control so they don't lay eggs in the first place. The definition of veganism by the vegan society says veganism aims to exclude all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals, right? And these eggs and milk were gone with zero exploitation or cruelty to animals. No, it's still exploitation because you're using the resources that the animals make for themselves or for their young and taking it for your own purposes. It may not create anywhere near the same amount of harm as factory farms, but it's still exploitation. That being said, I think backyard hens are in a completely different moral territory than factory farms. When I lay awake at night thinking about the billions of animals who are exploited every day, I'm not thinking about people with their backyard hens. I'm thinking about these giant corporations that we're trying to bring down. So I get that I can't eat an animal because that means I'd have to kill it, right? Which is suffering. But what if I had no involvement with the animal at all? Now say I'm walking along and I'll see a cow, right? And oh my god, it drops dead right there and then. Lucky me! I mean, oh no! How sad! But listen, I didn't kill it, right? Or exploit it in any way. So since it's not breaking the two major rules of veganism, right? Can I not pop you on the grill and have some burgers with the boys? One thing that bothers me about questions like this, and I've talked about this before, is that they're trying to find loopholes 
within veganism instead of engaging honestly with where they actually are. Like the cows he's eaten currently haven't dropped dead. They're slaughtered at a small fraction of their natural lifespan for products that we don't even need. I'd like to ask him how he can justify eating animals in our current system where 99% of animal products sold in the US are factory farmed. But that's not the topic of this video, so I will explain why I still think that we shouldn't eat the cow. When we were kids, we were taught that some animals like dogs and cats are worthy of love and other animals like pigs, chickens, and cows can be killed for whatever reason we want. A big part of the process of going vegan for me was breaking down that distinction in my mind. I started to see all animals the way we see dogs and cats, as individuals with their own thoughts and feelings and desire to live. In the scientific literature, we see that there is no meaningful difference between these two groups of animals, and the distinctions are based on culture and tradition. This idea is called speciesism, and it's one of the cornerstones of vegan philosophy. If you were walking along and you found a dead dog, would you eat it? What if it was your dog? Most people would say no to both questions because they view dogs as individuals, not objects. And that's how I see cows. We've spent thousands of years treating them like objects, but they're not objects. As vegans, we want to see the world evolve away from using them as resources. When you refuse to eat animals in any situation, including this hypothetical one, you reinforce the idea that animals are here with us, not for us. If you eat the hypothetical cow, you're still contributing to a culture that views sentient animals as objects, and I think that that's bad. I don't necessarily think it's immoral in the grand scheme of things, but I wouldn't personally do it. I think the reason he's asking these questions is because meat eaters can't understand what it's like to not want these products. They think vegans are constantly walking around resisting the desire to eat meat, but that's not been my experience at all. When I learned about the meat industry and how it operates, I no longer wanted to eat animals. Your taste buds change quickly as well. I never thought I'd get excited about tofu, but now it's one of my favorite foods. As far as my other favorites, like burgers, pizza, nachos, the vegan versions are better than I remember animal products ever being. Most vegans won't eat the cow, not because it's some immoral action, but because we genuinely don't want to eat the cow. Quick question for any vegans who are religious, right? If God wanted us to be vegan, why is it that I cry when I cut into an onion, but not a chicken? <laughs> Because if God wanted me to be a vegan, right, surely he'd make me cry every time I cut into flesh and meat. But no, he makes me cry when I cut into an onion, a vegetable. Checkmate, vegans. If he had to cut into a chicken that was alive, he might have a different answer. Slaughterhouse workers have to cut up dead animals all day, and they have some of the highest rates of PTSD, depression, and substance abuse. I hate cutting onions, but hearing the screams of animals in slaughterhouses made me cry way more than cutting onions ever will. Can vegans eat mushrooms? Now listen, I know you might hear that and think that's a stupid question, right? But apparently, according to science, mushrooms are genetically closer to humans than they are plants. So if we go by that logic, right, doesn't that mean that if you eat mushroom, you're closer to being a cannibal? Then you are a vegan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this actually isn't even the first time I've heard this argument, but I still think it's really dumb. Fungi are genetically closer to us than they are to plants, but humans are still genetically closer to animals. We're 50% genetically similar to mushrooms, but 75% to chickens, 80% to cows, and 98% genetically similar to pigs. It's kind of a bummer that people choose to ask these silly questions instead of more relevant ones, like how many animals do we breed and slaughter every year? How how do they kill these animals? How could we move culture away from this terrible system? Man, it'd be nice if people asked about that. But they won't, because they don't want to think about their lifestyle. They want to come up with stupid situations to try to discredit vegans. I don't want this video to be seen as vegan law, so let me know down below if you have any different takes, and if you want to help us with our campaigns to move society away from using animals as resources, donate to Pro Animal Future today. Links in the description.